Hey guys, happy Tuesday. All right, hey Scott, thank you. Hello, Andy. Hey Steve, hi Scott. Hi everybody. Everybody's mic is working. All right, so uh, yes, another week has flown by. Welcome to the Trade of the Week afternoon webinar series. Got some things to show you today for sure. Uh, we'll get right into it. The uh, Trade of the Week is a webinar from a couple of guys who are not licensed to be financial advisors, and this company is not registered investment advisors. We're a software as a subscription company, so we have a few opinions, and we'll share them, but they're not to be construed as financial advice. It's not the business we're in. All right, good enough on that. All right, the weekly reminder that we're about 15 years deep, at least Andy and myself so far into this program. Uh, Trade Ideas platform has come a long way and it's not something that you can learn overnight. So we have a lot of ways to um, keep the uh, content flowing for newer users, to keep the ideas um, uh, you know, on what you're looking for. Um, primarily Barry's room is always open. If the market's open, Maybe not the last 45 minutes, many days, because most of the action occurs in Barry's room and the pre-market stuff. They're really active over there. Good group of people, hundreds of them, and a couple of real good traders kind of take the lead. But Barry's always there to help give advice and demonstrate the Trade Ideas platform. So if you're not aware of that, you are missing out. It's a free room. And if you're paying someplace else, you might want to compare the two, because you're probably going to want to stop paying somebody. We have the afternoon webinars, um, like today, like yesterday with myself and uh, and Jamie. And uh, tomorrow you'll get Dan and Brad talk about usually kind of what's coming around the corner. You're going to surprise to us half the time. The two mad scientists on Wednesday kind of tip their hand a little bit. And then Andy has a lot of thoughts on Thursday after the market about what's going on and some ideas on how to use the uh, Trade Ideas platform to benefit. And since uh, there's no afternoon webinars on Friday, we make the Friday support session available uh, two hours. We'll fix that slide, uh, 11 to 1 p.m. Eastern. But that's about the most it goes usually on Friday. And anybody can come in and, and do the same thing we're doing right now. View our desktop, listen to us talk, ask the uh, questions via the questions panel, and uh, we'll help serve up some answers visually. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you're thinking, well, I really wish I could pick up the phone and call these guys. It doesn't really work out that, that well because we're pointing to things you can't see and trying to help out. You know, it's just it's the best way to do it. So we make that available to everybody who wants to come by. It's first come, first serve. Come in and ask questions, and we will visually demonstrate it for you. It works a hell of a lot better than a phone call. Lastly, Every week, starting on Monday, repeating each Monday through Thursday, is the uh, Trade Ideas University. It's uh, still live. It might be ever evergreened at some point soon, but for now, you can still get additional one-on-one -on -one live Q&A demonstration better than a phone call. And we're there every day, so if you're not available, if you're not aware of that, you know, email us and we'll send you out some links or some info on how to get to that. The basic stuff usually has the biggest crowd on Monday. Sean and Andy turn them loose with the kind of the playlist of what's to come and you know I know I would do the same thing a lot of people jump on that playlist and by the time we get to Tuesday half the audience is gone because they're off getting their own uh, their own answers through the video playlist again better than a phone call <laughs> all right so man and machine combined human and machine um, it's just a reminder that the world we're moving forward is uh, not to be feared with the machines. They're here to help us. They're not going to take over, but at the same time, they're not going to do all the heavy lifting for us. They're here to help give us a better data set to work with and help simplify our lives and, and make things much more efficient. And that's what Trade Ideas is certainly doing, whether it's building your own custom formulas, whether it's the Brokerage Plus connection and whether it's the AI generated ideas for entries all the values are on the entry we're going to look at that coming up for sure so we'll touch more on that but just the theme of the slide that of course I did borrow from uh, Mr. Brian Shannon he gave me permission to use it some people did see that in our last uh, trade ideas summit and I just thought it was just so good I had to borrow it so there it is and here we go the 26th we'll start off with some market recap uh, the trade of the week as the theme is, uh, we'll check on that name. And some of the past names are coming to life, so we'll talk about that. 
And then, uh, you know, the email that a lot of people may have came into the webinar was, it really is this easy. You know, trading is not easy. And I would never sit here and say it is easy, but sometimes a little method can really be easy. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, explore that exhaustively. Um, and just looking to make sure we're, we're not missing any questions here. Yeah, some good comments on Barry in the room. Barry pointed out two great trades today that helped Glenn uh, meet his goal, which is great. And free is a great price. You didn't pay any money for that, Glenn. And uh, yeah, extermination of humans might be a health hazard, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get to that point. Elon Musk kind of thinks so, but I don't. I think we still have our hands on the main switch. I'd like to think that anyway. All right, so we'll get started. I'll grab my pen and we'll look at the market, which not really much changed from yesterday in Jamie's uh, session and my comments over there, but we'll start nonetheless with the SPY. And we'll just draw you know, what a perfect chart bull market looks like. You know, going from lower left to upper right, 10 above the 20, above the 50, above the 200. It really doesn't get much more pretty than that. And uh, all you need to know is, is the momentum still in place? And look at that. There's test of the 10 period tested. And what do you know? Last week, we had a couple of beautiful tests of the 10 period each day. The price bounced right back up and did not post a close below the 10 period moving average, which gave us the end of day data that set that um, momentum was still intact. Three days in a row, it gave us that. And a nice weekend to think about it and a gap up for those who stayed in over the weekend. So. Nice trampoline action. Maybe we'll start calling it the, that the trampoline setup because uh, when a perfect market looks perfect, this is what you would expect to see if you're a bull. If you're a bear, you've got to ask yourself, what in the hell are you doing? You're sitting there not paying any attention to price action. Uh, if you're managing money, other people's money, you should really be asking yourself, what the hell are you doing? And if other people are managing your money in a short fund, you got to ask them, what the hell are they doing? Because the price action is telling you there is absolutely no bear case to be made. Um, the only bear case they're having is a big hope and prayer that the big black swan is going to come out of the, out of the blue that nobody saw coming and take us down overnight 500 points. Because other than that, there's just absolutely no reason to be short this market. Um, you know, even the gold bugs are throwing in there, throwing up their hands. You know, completely different tale of two tapes over here. Moving averages crossed over. Now we got the 10 below the 20, below the 50 dictating the price action. So for all the defensive people, you know, that's not working out either. Um, stocks are where it is right now, and uh, the 401ks are happy until further notice. Uh, until a price action closes below that 10 period moving average, um, and then even worse, closes below the 20 period, well, then we might be up for some more correction. But here's a perfect example of how the market moves up three steps forward and two and a half steps back. Got a little bit ahead of itself up here. Had to come back and fill that gap, which it did perfectly, and now it's on its way again. So. You know, it's, it might be boring to some, but I'll tell you what, when we get to the trade of the week section, I'm sure happy the market, the backdrop of the market set up as it did like this, because it gave us a lot of things to choose from, um, a lot of nice setups. It's just a matter of when are you going to to come through. You know, I was going to look through at, uh, at some of these, uh, uh, the A table stocks, not to get too far away from the segment here, but um, there's a place and a time to let these things set up. Boy, I sure would have wish I kind of would have seen these right here because I already know RH is at the top of my short float. It's got a giant great score. It's an A table score. You know, this thing just doesn't want to sell off. It held the 50 like like it was a cement floor. But every now and then when you go through these lists, you'll which we're gonna do a little bit later, I wish I kind of kind of wish I had seen it on that day right there. Maybe I should just zoom back so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, kind of like right back there. Falling back picking up that gap and then getting ready to move higher. That's what we're doing for the most part in the SPY. So it's just a jump rope and you got to time your individual entries appropriately. So there's that one. There's the, the NASDAQ, pretty much the same, a little bit more sloppy over here on the uh, the 10 period moving average, but nonetheless gave us nice closing bottoming wicks and closed at or near that moving average. I'm more concerned with the S&P, but same thing over here, just a beautiful looking snapshot of what a chart should look like going from lower left to upper right if you're a bull. Um, and again, this is the one that's been leading us higher. I'll save the IWM for last because that's interesting. Dow, same thing, a little bit sloppy, but for the most part, adhered uh, to the, the trend line and 
built to higher low. So there's absolutely no bear, no bear case to be made. What do you know? Another high in the Dow, all-time high in the Dow today, in the S&P again today. Um, Santa Claus rally, I guess, is, is in full effect. And then we get to last week's trade of the week. And another example of why patience can certainly pay off. We thought this was coming. And what did we have yesterday? We had yesterday, we had moving day in the IWM. We had giant volume. It was a 2.0 relative volume day. Giant green candle, closing a highs. A little bit of follow through on the open and then kind of gave us a doji on the close. In my opinion, it could be setting up for a go pause, go tomorrow. But in the bigger picture, this thing finally gave us what we were waiting for. The fund managers out there are finally waking up and realizing if they want to play catch up to the rest of the market up here at all time highs, or shoot, even higher for that, you know, all the stuff we just looked at, that second orange line, this is where the alpha is back here. And it, it finally broke out of a significant range and more importantly has posted two closes now, for the most part, two closing days above that range. And so if you're a fund manager and you got to explain to your fund holders why you can't outperform the S&P, you're starting to look for areas in here where the, you know, the catch up is going to lie, the, the catching up period, the distancing yourself from the regular indexes. Anybody can take your money and throw in an index and charge you 2% and go play golf and have lunch at the Four Seasons and spend all your time trying to get more accounts. But in the end, the numbers are what matter. And I think this is finally paying off. It's even more significant when you look at it in the weekly. There. So. Hopefully the small caps are going to have a really nice Santa Claus rally and continue uh, their movement. The data, the price action footprint in the sand would suggest they did. And uh, again, here's a good uh, example of it would have been nice to see this thing go in the trade of the week when we thought it should go, but it took a few more days. Gave us a little bit of a pain in the butt right here on that candle. But for the most part, if you just look at it, it uh, didn't really, in the big scheme of things, it didn't do much. It stayed in its sideways channel. Got a little sloppy, indexes can do that sometimes. But there you go, I think there's better things to come on that. Um, before we move on, anything you wanna add, Andy? No, there's not much to add, Steve. I mean, it's just, um, you know, even when you get it all time at highs in the major indices, uh, probably uh, most of the talk is probably with the IWM since it's long ways away from its all time high. Hopefully, hope it'd be nice if it gets there. Uh, but it does uh, too, because I yeah. adjusted my 401k accordingly. Yeah. Um, the uh, play tomorrow might be if we do get a go pause go tomorrow being the go day again in IWM, uh, today being the day of rest. Pay attention to some of the under ten dollar stocks that the AI might be spitting out tomorrow. It could be uh, a little bit more interesting stuff happening over there. All right, so what we're gonna do. Um, you know, I didn't have the uh, the Holly recap uh, or the AI recap in there. Is there anything you want to add? Because I mean, we might just again kind of blend uh, uh, over over the lines here a little, blur over the lines a little bit. Because what I was going to do, Andy, is um, I want to talk after the trade of the week when we get a little bit after I get out of this lockup. I'm going to show people how to go back and just focus on Neo. I mean, myself and I know Andy, our focus pretty much has only been on this third segment we call Neo. Um, and it started on November 4th. So what I want to do is I want to go back to November 4th and uh, show a few things. It'll all tie together, but we're going to be looking at a lot of uh, a lot of trades, and we're actually going to mark up a lot of price alerts and hand those out as well to try and really tie together the value of what we just saw um, in the test drive and the, even the week prior. But that being said, is there anything that you want to add on the segment of Holly or the AI, Neo, I should say? Or did I totally stump you? <laughs> oh, he's offline. He must be having a thunderstorm. Well, that's okay because, as I said, um, he'll come back <laughs> when he's ready. Yeah, country internet, exactly. They forgot to feed the, uh, the, the horses that were on the treadmill. And here comes the cell text. Internet went down. I'll come back if I can. <laughs> no problem. This is how it works. So what I want to do is I'm going to transition, transition. Where did we find the trade of the week? Well, since the AI Neo has been producing a lot more interesting ideas since November 4th, I've been looking there a lot more and I've been seeing a lot more interesting stuff. And so I want to kind of you know, 
break that down for you in today's session. But getting back to the trade of the week, let's DXC, all right? And let's just, uh, not, not a great uptrend, but a nice downtrend. But here is the point I want to make, and Andy's been driving this point home to you. A lot of people say, hey, how do you use AI, you know, or, or how do you find good swing trades in general? Just forget the AI, I mean, because we've got alerts that find things as well. Well, we always love volume, an event, like a giant gap here, and big moving day. I think we can all agree that this day, something significantly changed in this particular stock. And as it were, Look at that, we had the buy tag midday through Holly on that day. So Holly's the AI, I'm gonna quit calling it Holly because we're gonna start segmenting Neo and Holly. The AI caught something midday, so there's our buy tag, all right? All of a sudden, here's the point, here's the takeaway. The AI has just put something on your radar of significance. Giant candle having a giant day. And this is why I'm continuing to point towards Neo. The AI Neo is only a basket of four strategies now. They're the same four strategies every night, two longs and two shorts. Two of them are momentums and two of them are fades by the pullback for long and go short on the bounce for the other ones. And that's all we really need. As long as there's volume, as long as there's smoke, there's fire, we're gonna find the action. But the point being is it doesn't just end that day. This stock has now been put on the radar. It now should be in your watch list. It now should be on your possible price alert. So let's go back in time a little bit. And then what do you know? We had another day where the AI saw something, another green day with volume, some sort of a day trade opportunity. But remember the AI closes at the end of each day. And by the way, these, these Neo segments, they are all running till the last five or 10 minutes of the day. That's the time to stop on these new strategies. So we're trying to squeeze as much as we can out on these days. So two glaring buy tags that the AI saw something midday, usually with volume, some sort of action. This stock needs to remain on our radar. Well, what do you know? Zoom forward again. Let me bring it in a little bit. And this is what I saw going into the weekend. Now, for those Waleed and friend and, and, and some of the others I'm missing, Sorry, I'll scroll back, uh, David, Stan. You all know how I feel about this 10 period moving average because I just talk about it all the freaking time. When I see a stock that's in play, and we talked earlier about when the jump rope sets up, did the, was the jump rope setting up up here? No, there was absolutely no setup up there. But after beautiful three red days of candle and pullback, and all the algorithms start to sense that this is getting to be the base. And then all of a sudden we touch the 10 period. Well, guess what I did on Friday? I saw this and I said, there's our trade of the week. It took me three minutes going through the NEO setups. Again, because NEO is looking for big events, big turning events. I think, again, we can all agree the stock was different this day versus that day. Something has happened. And that interest and that momentum will continue. That's how a trend is set, higher lows. So it makes perfect sense to me that that's the buy point of a higher low. So there is the easy explanation for why DXC. Um, we had a great two week test drive. The AI Neo did a really good job and I'll demonstrate that uh, in reality with data in a minute, um, demonstrating the, the Neo segment doing having a good week, good two weeks. And so I wanted to tie it all together. Um, to show everybody, you know, they were there witnessing the test drive. People saw these, you know, in, in real time. But what I'm trying to tie together is don't lose track of these things. Look at this beautiful setup right here. And so we're going to call it as the trade of the week. And there it is. And wouldn't you know it? It worked perfectly. Um, triggered yesterday. Um, let's just take a quick look. I think it had a little bit of a fit on the open, as they always do. If we break down the intraday patterns here. Big sell off there on the open, it didn't trigger, but it tried to shake a lot of people out. Now, a lot of you regulars have also heard me say, before we have the move, we have the counter move, the shakeout move, the move that pisses everybody off, that got too tight of a stop that missed a big move. And that move usually happens early in the morning. So it happened yesterday and then it triggered for us up in this general area. Look what it did again today. It tried to give some back today. The worst, the worst of the, the, the worst action of the day was the first 15 minute candle maybe a small test there. That's it, you know, the volatility and the test of, the test of a good stock is pretty much gonna come in the first 15 minute candle. And that's based on the way the market is run these days by algorithms. It's just my observation. I've seen both sides of the mountain 
I, I was here in 97 and 98 when it was human versus human. And now I see it the way the market, the way the uh, algos run this place and all the crazy volatility, and all the action, all the attempts to shake out, to displace you from your shares is going to happen on the open. So just be aware of that it happened yesterday and today. So once that happened, I'm very happy with the, what we did. It just fought like a champ for the rest of the day. It grinded higher. And then when we look at that on the daily chart, it just starts to just, it, it um, just reinforces all I continue to say. It's like this thing's walking up a stair step, that 10 period moving average. It's just not going to put a close below it. If it does put a close below it, then we have a caution flag, but it didn't do it again today. Another beautiful bottoming wick. I expect hopefully some follow through again tomorrow. So we talked also about the IWM, which was two weeks ago. The lesson over there was patience. Again, no real reason to freak out. You know, it, it was just playing around in its little playground there. Sideways is always better than uh, pullback in price. So, you know, there's that one. I think I recall that CLF a few weeks back was bottoming. Bottoming would have, you know, we would have liked to have seen it take off and follow through there, but it didn't. It wasn't ready, but it is sure putting in a solid footing. Had a nice move in the last few days. So, you know, these swing trades don't always work when we want them to, but if they don't, they don't shake you out or wear you out, scare you out or wear you out is the term. There's no reason to get out as long as you have the capital and you can apply it towards something. Um, so I just saw somebody mention ENPH, which has been kind of on the radar for a while and it's popping back up. Look at that. Okay. So just out of curiosity, we talk about algorithms needing a, a target, a waypoint algorithm. If, when, touch 200 SMA reverse by, I, you know, I don't know, but it just seems there's just too many coincidences when you look at the bigger picture. You know, somebody's programming these things and they've got to have some sort of a waypoint to program them. So it appears the 200 day was very solid in that one. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any other recent trade of the week that we know VLO just never worked out. Let's look at the bad side too. I mean, basically lost this one on this day right here. And that's why we say get out. The next day was even more painful. Um, and now look what's happened. It's the complete other side of the mountain. The moving averages have crossed. And that 10 period is now having a say coming down on top of the price. This is no longer a good looking chart. We want to be out of that one. Yeah, Jeff said X, which is going to look a lot like Cliff. Going back a couple more weeks, even more, a big solid base was built, but this thing is wanting to move higher. Um, what I see in the near future is going to be a, a war of the worlds right there, at the declining 200 day. It'll probably get there. I don't know when but it probably it's safe to say it has a date with touching that declining 200 day. A lot of damage has been done in this thing. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal when you compare that to what we're looking at in the SPY, a 200 day oil tanker sloping up. So X has had a rough go of it. Uh, the worst of it is probably out. So that was the segment for the most part on um, kind of revisiting trade of the week. Again, DXC was uh, derived from NEO. We're going to go and we're going to do, um, a lot of uh, a lot of charts and what do I mean by is it really this easy you know it's kind of on the heels there of what I'm talking about with um, with here we go with uh, the DXC trade um, if you don't know if you're brand new to trading and you have no idea where to look well I'm going to show you that uh, the three weeks three and a half weeks that I've been watching this brand new neo strategy I can safely say this it's certainly not getting people in trouble and if you're a new trader, not getting in trouble is about the best thing you can hope for because everything else is a learning experience. So what, I mean, what do I mean by that? It means it's producing profits daily. And if it's not producing profits, it's flat to down a slight bit, but it's not getting you in trouble. It's not having giant down days. And we're gonna take a look at that. So why, what did I mean by, is it really this simple? Yeah, it really is that simple. We're gonna just look for trades. We only had four today. So we're gonna add those to the heap. We're gonna look back on a few more. And if things look good, we're going to mark them up and we're going to watch them. We're going to keep them on a watch list. Or we might even mark up a, a, a price alert trigger. And that's how simple it is. You know, we're being served up by the new Neo trades and we're waiting for the jump rope to come in our area and maybe take a stance. Now that's where it gets a little bit more discretion because people maybe don't realize how long I've been looking at charts and how significant something like that little area is using that 10 period SMA. It looks like a sad face. But it's not a sad face, it was a happy face. 
All right, so that's how simple it can be. Using our trade ideas, new NEO, to find the action, to find the volume. And if you don't catch it on this day or this day, well, guess what? Everybody that caught it on the trade of the week six, seven days later, so far, are still happy, knock on wood, and I hope they remain happy, but we'll see. So what we're gonna do, uh, finishing out here, for the most part, is look at a lot of stocks. But I'm gonna show you some data first. Um, I already compiled the data. So again, I don't wanna focus, and if I were you, really, I'm not saying you need to, I don't, you know, from what I've seen, this is where the action is, okay? So going forward tomorrow, what I've done on my screen, and you, if you're not familiar, you can do the same, you just segment to Holly Neo for the trades, the individual trades, you're not gonna see the other trades. For the strategy up top to calculate the profits, whatnot, segment to Holly Neo. So we're only looking at the Neo basket. And um, I went back and I looked on the chart. I think it was November 4th that was the first day. So with that being said, um, I don't want to collect any old NEO data because those were old trades before the new paradigm came in. And the new paradigm, again, are these four strategies here, two longs and two shorts, two momentums, and two fade the bounce or buy the pullback, so to speak. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use the history feature in only NEO, which we're in the segment. That's why you want to do that step first. Let's go to our time frame option. And I'm going to go to the fourth, just like I did there already. I'm going to click OK. Here it comes, loading. All right, so now we have all this data. Uh, I can sort it however I want. Looks like currently it's sorted on wins and losses. And look, so just so you know, all these values in the PL data are based on the $100 <clears throat> maximum stop loss, which means I don't want to lose more than $100 if the stock stops out, which a lot of these did, and you'll see these values stuck right there at 99 and 100. That's, again, a big plus. That's part of the value add here, because newer traders, sometimes they become a deer in the headlights with emotions and whatnot. They keep moving their goalposts and second-guessing themselves. No, it's, it's a great habit that the AI demonstrates daily on risk management. You, you, you got to cut it off at some point and you really should adhere to those, but then we go up more to the happy area. Well, what I've done, and I'll show you, is I kind of created just a quick spreadsheet. I'm going to show you how I did that in case you want to do it. It's not exactly intuitive. Um, I grabbed, uh, you know, the profits and I'm scraping down and there's no menu, so you got to kind of know the keystrokes. I went down here and stopped at the, the last profitable trade, and I'm doing Control C. By doing that, you know, you can basically drop that into with Control V. You can drop those into spreadsheets. So I've done that already, right? So here's the profitable ones. They're not in order because I'll show you why in a second. Uh, and then the negative ones. Well, the profitable ones turned out to be again on a Per, uh, on a value um, paradigm of risking no more than $100 a trade. There was $7,400 in profits, and on the downside, there was $4,700 in losses for a net change of $2,700, it appears. Um, so that is only NEO since November 4th. That's how the data. All right, let me just minimize that. Now, what I did also is I sorted by longs and shorts because I kind of want to go through one by one quickly and do what I did um, to find that DXC, see if we can find some more and tie it all together. It really is that simple. You know, we can try and find some good setups, but the discretionary part comes in here as to, okay, well, why do you like that one? Why do you not like that one, Steve? So we'll try and do, do my best. What I'm not going to do is get all the way down I've already looked at a lot of these short sellers, and, and the reason is, is we're in a bull market right now, and so a lot of these shorts that didn't work, they, they don't look great right now, so we're going to kind of avoid those, but we're going to start at the top, we're going to look at a lot of stuff here, and we're going to mark them up, and if Andy joins us eventually, that's fine, no big deal, it's too bad because I kind of wanted to have his second pair of eyes, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, something that gives me a bit bigger picture, and I'm going to go through these one by one. Um, oops, let me get my price alerts up here. All right, so these are all past. I'm going to delete those. 
It looks like Glenn has a question. Since Andy's not here, I'll just take a look. You've got a one month old standard and trying to upgrade premium. Okay, I'm not sure, Glenn. That's a total accounting question. I wouldn't be able to help you here. Just wait for them to get back to you as long as you emailed info at trade-ideas.com. You know, attention accounting, you'd be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna find things that look interesting. I wanna try and find the next DXC. So we don't have to do any programming. You don't have to create your own scans to do this. It's just waiting for to see what is coming out of interest. And I'm not doing these again by um, date. I'm sorting them by first long and then just kind of the, the profitable ones. So right off the bat, this one way back there was great if you were in it, but all those gaps don't help us at the moment. Uh, this one could be interesting, but it's only got a couple days of data. But you know, if I was gonna do something, I'll go ahead and do it. We're gonna, it's a small cap stock and I like that. So we're just gonna throw a price alert in here. Might be some follow through and small cap. I will hand these out as a cloud link so the people that can um, receive them and want to use them will have them active and ready to go. Trade ideas to Andy, come in, please. Yes, and somebody doesn't trust just me. They want Andy as well, but I want Andy as well too because he might see something that I missed. But nonetheless, the show goes on. I like this. Why do I like it? It's adhering like twice. Trade ideas has liked it. It's consolidating sideways. Yeah, I like this a lot. I'm going to look at the I'm going to get a head start right there on that one. We'll just go ahead. No notes. We're just going to throw it in there. All right, next one up. Uh, I don't really see a setup there. It's. I'm not going to chase that one. Definitely not going to chase that. That one probably needs to come in and settle. I don't like the way that one's giving way back and then broke that moving average. You're going to pass on that one. This one gave all of that back. I don't like that. Not going to chase seven green bars. Can't do that. We're looking for some nice sideways action. Um, you know, this one could resettle again. Keep your eye on that, but I don't see anything in the moment. Again, um, not going to chase that. That must be an acquisition. That's the only thing that makes sense there. Okay, I do like this CDLX. It's a little rough around the edges, but look, it's uh, it was great volume, uh, big gap. Something has definitely happened here and the buyers are not gonna let it drop. So we're interested. We are interested. Let's go to the, I'm gonna go above yesterday's open, right about, let's see there. Actually, I'm gonna go above today's high. And I see a little bit of congestion yesterday. So I'm gonna eyeball this roughly. I don't think that's gonna to be too big of a deal. All right, so there's that one. Definitely no, because it gave everything back. It has proven that it was not interested, okay? This one's had a nice move, but just put in a big red bar, bounced right where it was supposed to, but I'd like to see more consolidation. Uh, this one's kind of doing its own thing. I mean, there's definitely a case to be made if it gets above that level. We'll go ahead and mark that up. Again, I'm not gonna be conservative here. I'm gonna mark up as many as I think are good. That's a mess, I don't want any part of that. Not going to chase that. That's too many green bars. You know what? I don't really like all the spikes on that one. Although it is moving higher. What is this? Uh, credit PRA group. You know, it just doesn't really seem to want to get out of its own way. But I'll leave that one open. I'll leave, I'll leave that one to, to discretion. Somebody else can play with that one. This one's a mess. It's all over. It's gapping left and right, and it's closing below its moving average. I don't like that. All right, now this one could be interesting, but I don't like it because this is the day it was lost. Remember I always say, I don't like it when a closing candle closes below that moving average and then confirms it the next day and the next day. So this thing's under pressure now, it's not resting. It was a lot more interesting right here, I'll tell you that, but they don't all go. This one showed us early that it failed and I don't like that anymore. Uh, where were we, okay. Yeah. Look, that was way back here. It's given a lot back, That's that's a mess. Too many gaps, that's Sony, that's a ADR, that's a foreign company, don't trade those because all the movements happen overnight. You can just see it in the chart, it's screaming at you. I like this. Well, why do I like it? Because we're already in at DXC and it looks good back here. So how about that? That's where that one showed up. Uh, that one's kind of sloppy, I'm not really seeing much there. A little sloppiness here, nice big move on the close. Could be some follow through there tomorrow, but I'm gonna leave that one to chance this one is just a complete failure. Matter of fact, it looks like almost a short. 
but remember we're still looking at the longs uh false start there it's this swing's full of a lot of false starts blooming onions huh this is the uh aussie steakhouse back seen a lot of mess there but could be one to keep an eye on i mean this one was way back when we first started you know again here's a great example of there was a there was a setup that we missed and i would say it was back here in this area like it didn't even get close it didn't even let that 10 period get close but now we're starting to live on borrowed time it's been moving a lot i'd like to see something that hasn't moved so much uh, where are we down here okay that's a mess again here's another great example of one that probably should have gone right here but didn't it spent the last three days bleeding under no longer interested and what i'm trying to do here guys again is you know impart 35,000 hours of staring at charts and summarize it as to why it's the past and why it's interesting. Um, that one's already had three days of movement, probably needs to consolidate a bit more. That's a funny looking chart. All right, this one's kind of interesting. I've never heard of this one, a little Liberty Media. I guess I have heard of this one, but look at how it's writing that moving average. And on the bigger picture here, it's kind of given us a little bit of consolidation we can work with. We'll go ahead and just put out the new high there which was close to today's high. I think we've set about six or seven so far, but we've got more to go. That one, AMAT, good name, but it's a mess. This one completely gave up. All right, this one may have a shot still. We don't know, it hasn't proven anything, but if it does, if it does wanna bounce higher, let's be there for it. And we'll call that uh, there at the highs. Just doing some rough eyeball work. So if it does want to move out of there higher, uh, it'll go somewhere. If it doesn't, and it starts to bleed lower like those others after a couple of days, and we're not in, we're not interested anymore. All right, I like this. Look at how the uh, moving average is coming up and starting to dictate uh, a lot of volume, big gap, probably earnings, some sideways action, a bit of spiky, spiky candles the volume's good when i see spiky candles the first thing i want to look at is what's the average daily volume so that's not too bad but i think this is, can be a contender and we'll use we we'll use this intraday high right there all right moving on and we might get to a few shorts okay what's this zillow group this one's been moving high a big significant event right there and it bounced off that average. It might be ready to set up, but it also might be a day early. You know, we could come in here, let's do this. Let's do a pullback entry. Let's try an eyeball where it might come back and threaten on that 10 period moving average. Code it for a long instead of a short. And we'll call that one a pullback entry. Okay, so I had a big day today. This was uh, one of the today's NEOs. Now there could be some follow through, but phew, might not be much. I'm not gonna trust that for a bit of, follow through we're going to wait and see if that one sets up again uh, that one's kind of interesting but uh, just the fact that it's the way it's consolidating now we're getting into the ones that uh, haven't really done much again here's another example of one that might have been really interesting right there but didn't go it's gotten really messy now it's under that 10 period i'm no longer interested in trusting the 20 coming up underneath. I'd rather be staying with the ones that are on the trampoline, that are bouncing off the 10 period, that don't bleed through and have to hit the back stop of the 20. That's more of a gamble in my opinion. Uh, oops, gotta get rid of that. RDNT, interesting looking chart. It's completely repelled by this uh, moving average coming up to meet it. The only thing I don't like here is, is all the space between the moving average. I prefer to be buying down here rather than buying with all this space above. So I'm gonna leave that one be, it might be a bit of a chase. How are we doing on time? Well, we got good time. Here's another one that just kind of failed. I'm not gonna give that one anymore. Here's one I wouldn't chase. Uh, it was getting close to that 10 period and phew, took off again. But again, same story. It's on the radar because of AI Neo. We just have to find out when to time the jump rope and not chase and not marry ourselves to things that are bleeding down through their moving averages so we're getting kind of the lower end of the, the, the barrel here of the longs let's see not sure how that one hmm. 
Well, that one took its own sweet time, but eventually it did move higher. You know, now we're into the ones that haven't really moved very much since they first uh, triggered, and so I'm not quite seeing as much. Look at that one. Today's day one of it just kind of giving up. I'm not interested. So when I see that, I'm no longer interested. Just trying to point out uh, what I'm seeing here, guys. Uh, I'm not really, that's a funny looking chart. Let's see here. All right, so we're starting to get close to some possible shorts. Big mess, yeah, these are all just messy. All right, so now we gotta flip it upside down because right there, uh, we're gonna look for shorts. So we gotta flip our brains upside down here. We're starting to look. Now what I don't wanna do is, uh, because what's difficult in this bull market that we're in is, is catching a lot of momentum to the short side. I'd rather find something that had a significant down event and is pulled back or bounced back up, I should say, and is setting back up for a possible roll back over. This is not one of them. This is that day and a half I talked about yesterday and a half of today bouncing. That's no longer interesting to the short side. So let's just move on here. That's bouncing a bit too much. Okay, this is interesting, All right? Big sell day, another sell day, but look, everybody that's sold down here, it's calling selling in the pocket, shorting in the pocket meaning you've waited for one, two, three days, you decided to pull the trigger and you get immediately bounced out. That's typical, but these trades are great trades, just like we were doing on the long side. We're looking to find things to set back up on the short side, and this is looking pretty darn good to me. So I'm just gonna look at the low of today, actually. I might take the low of yesterday. No, I'm gonna take the low today. Let's just, uh, let's look at this daily intraday chart here. I'm gonna eyeball right about there. I think the momentum could carry through and it's coded for a short. There's one of our short cells. Here's the event, not chasing down here. Oh, look, the jump rope setting up perfectly for us. Nice topping tail there on the open. Got everybody out on the open, and now it's starting to maybe roll back over. I bet you this one does pretty well tomorrow. Uh, whew, this one could be interesting too. Look at how it's uh, kind of pausing here. It's waiting for the moving average to come down and decide, but there's still a lot of space. I don't think there's much we could figure out where the where the good entry would be, so I'll pass on that one. This one could be interesting. Um, big down and a push right back up into these moving averages. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna put it right over here, which is like kind of yesterday's congestion. That'll be a short. And just a couple more shorts. And if Andy's not back, we'll bring in Scott. Here's another attempt way back when, big volume, down volume, it's recuperated most of it, and it's having a rough time getting back above these levels. Um, you, know, you could really make a good case for that, but something's telling me I'm not really that interested because of the, uh, oh shoot, I think I just locked up, because of the way in which it bounced uh, and gave it kind of a double hitch there. And let's see, if, well, we gotta wait for my trade ideas to unlock on me. And it looks like Andy's not gonna make it, so we'll do a few more here. There we go, and then we'll bring Scott back in. All right, I do not like that big candle up today, so we'll pass on that short. Uh, this was today's short, and you don't want to try and short the momentum immediately. This one's being blown out too, so we might be getting to the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, that one's blown out as well. I mean, they worked for a little bit, but now this, you know, this runaway bull market is kind of taken back. This one, this one's struggling here. Um, this one could be interesting. Let's. Definitely have some more room to fall. It doesn't bounce, it's been going sideways. It got kind of caught up yesterday and back. I'm gonna put a short in, I'm gonna follow through and see if we can get some momentum down to that prior low. And if there is, there could be some nice follow through on that one. That one's getting blown out. That one's already had two days of follow through. Not enough data there. This one's kind of interesting. Um, bounce back up, rolled back over. I'm gonna go ahead and put a short there as well. And boy, that one's not doing a whole lot either. Not doing a whole lot there. That one's interesting that it's going sideways, but we still have a bit of space there. If we were, if 
we were much closer, if that line was hugging it, I'd be marking that one up. Could be a day away from that one though. But again, just trying to show you if you, there's a possibility, but look, that's starting to bleed higher. You know, if it was a short sell, it's not working out. It's, uh, it's bleeding back up through there. So, you know, if you were interested in trying to short this day here, that day just confirmed, it's probably not gonna work out. So I think I've given a lot of examples here. Let me just see if I've missed anything. And if not, I will share this out. Look at this one's just being walked to the woodshed down that 10 period moon average. I mean, I'd hate to, to short a brand new low. I prefer to short the bounces, but you could make a case for that. And let's do one more just for fun. We're gonna do this intraday, big bounce, two, three days. Today was the third day, a high on the open, and now it got weak. Let's just short a new low tomorrow. We'll call it a day on that. So that's really, really the idea of what I wanted to kind of contribute today. Um, convey today of how we can just take the simple daily and again there was only four of them today let's go back to today only four trades today and as you can see you can do the math yourself the data shows you that uh, if you put drop it into a spreadsheet um, when we have good risk management and we're not risking uh, you know trades that are going against us and cutting them and letting the winners run we start to get some good ones the, the good ones start to outpace the bad ones to the tune of about that um, so you can see that for yourself uh, Hadi says, do you only follow the 10 simple? Yes, I only follow the 10 day simple moving average on the 15 minute chart for intraday momentum and on the daily chart for daily momentum. Hadi, that's about as simple as I can make it. Anything else is just way too much overkill for me. And we literally just got the 10 SMA filter as a part of our filter set now. So you can include those in some of your scans, which it only took me three years to, to get them to build it for me. So um, I'm trying to show the value of how we can use that not only on the charts as a visual uh, indicator, a visual inflection point or crossroads, if you will, but also incorporating those into uh, some certain scans. So yeah, that's my favorite and one and only indicator. And to sum it all together, you know, these are your trades. If you're new and you have no idea where to look, this isn't going to steer you wrong. The AI Neo is not going to get you into trouble. I just demonstrated that with all that data. What the hard part is, is trying to come through and see which ones do you like and which ones do you want to keep an eye on. And lastly, I'll remind you that, you know, we have this great tool. You know, some of these charts have a heart that I've, I've, put, a, I've put in. I'm looking at Roku, by the way, you know, just imprinting on charts. Moving up, moving sideways, my favorite action, and gets thwarted by that 10 period. Seeing it coming up in the rear view mirror, it starts to scare the price higher. It's super bullish when it can't even touch the price action might be some good follow through tomorrow on Roku. But put the heart on in these charts and all of a sudden you can make use of this. This is the my like symbols. You go to this, this channel right here with the heart in it. And when you're there, right click and save to the cloud the um, my like symbols. And from there, all you gotta do is just put a heart in there. And all the stuff that we just marked up, you know, which is in these price alerts. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. About 13 or 14. You literally could go through and just start, you know, harding all these. And there, not only are they, are they waiting for you to trigger and, and nudge you and say, hey, you might want to make a trade on here. You can follow them along in here as well. So that would be a good method. And that's about as simple as you can make it because trading is not simple. The idea is to try and figure out how to make it simple. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to share these 13. I'm going to copy. And if you know how to do it, you just uh, you go to the chat window and receive the price alerts. All 13 of them I will paste. I know Waleed knows how to get them. Uh, you're welcome, Hottie. And uh, you're welcome, Waleed, for the price alerts. So, you know, that's it. I don't have a sidekick uh, anymore. Andy's country internet is offline. So that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully we'll find another good uh, trade of the week. I'm going to try my best to find one on the recent, you know, AI uh, Holly Neo. If not, we'll go to one of my other fallback scans. But you know, that's that's the method, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Thank you for the comments. Let's bring Scott back in, and uh, with a couple of announcements, and we can move on. Yeah. Thank you. A um, couple items on the way out. We've got this series of eBooks the set up. There's three books, uh, two chapters each. They include cloud links to add strategies discussed in the books to your layout. 
and they're free, so grab them. Uh, trade-ideas.com slash setup is the page to go to to locate the books. Uh, just plug in your email address to go straight to the download page. Uh, we've got a podcast. We release podcasts on Fridays usually, so you can get ready for the next one by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and add us as a subscription. Also, scroll through some of the archives. We've got some interviews in there that are pretty interesting. Uh, as a code, Trade Turkey, good for the month. And it takes 15% off the first month or year of trade ideas, all caps like you see it on your screen. Uh, you can also use this to upgrade from standard to premium. Just uh, go to your account management section by logging into the website and uh, click on upgrade. Use that code there. Uh, any questions, email us at info at trade-ideas.com. That goes into our help desk and gets you the help you need. You can follow Steve on Twitter at TodayTrader. You can also follow at Trade Ideas. And uh, Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to like and share stuff with your friends. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Andy. All right. See you next time. Thanks, Andy.